All right, I've got some light going finally. I was having a tough time with the light. So, what I was attempting to do earlier was to get started on laying out my templates for the tow board and the seat pin. Uh, I ended up doing a little side project with Allie's little boy, Dylan, who's 10 years old. He had snow day today, half a day. He had an early release, half a day for the snow. And Allie called me. I was in the garage. She was in the house and said, Hey, can you do something with Dylan? I want to get him out of the house. So I said, uh, bring, him out, bring him out to the garage. I'll teach him how to weld. So we taught Dylan how to weld. Or I say we. I did. And what he ended up welding was this. He welded this entire flower by himself. And some of the welds look really good. I know it's hard to see. I, I guided him a few times with a few of the welds. But for the most part, all of these welds, he did himself. And he did an awesome job. We ended up making this for Allie. She picked out her colors after he showed it to her, and he painted it. She's super excited. He's excited. The smiles on his face were just amazing. It was just so cool. He was so excited. So it was really cool to be able to see him just almost immediately progress, and his welds just immediately became better and better. So it was really cool. So took a little break from what I was working on to to do that with Dylan and uh, now I'm going to get to work on laying out some templates for my tow board so what I need to do is I'm going to fill this void here above the transmission and then on the passenger side I'll build a couple separate pieces for these areas down here to fill in between the cowl and the frame rail and I will do the same you know on both sides so uh, that being said, I'm going to get to work on working on the driver's side now and then the passenger side, and then I'll connect the two with that. I'm just going to do my cardboard template. I'm not going to get any metal done tonight just because it's snowing and I don't want to be back and forth to the big shop out back. That's where my English wheel is in order to shape this piece of metal here. I do have a slip roll, so I might be able to shape that piece of metal with my slip roll. But again, for the most part, I i kind of just going to do the template. It's, it's already getting kind of late and I don't want to be out in the garage too much later. So I'm going to get to work on this and see what I can get done before I go in the house. Alright, so I popped the steering wheel off just to try to make it a little bit easier for myself to get it in and out with. Uh, I'm going to cut off some of that heavy paper board. Or what it, it's a ram board. I'm going to cut some of this ram board and uh, start making some templates. So this is that ram board. Some masking tape, pen. I mean, uh, I'm gonna grab a pen or a marker. Grab all a bunch of random tools that I'm gonna need, and uh, see what I can come up with. I'm gonna grab some magnets. All right, so I'm going to do this in three different sections. driver's side, the transmission tunnel, and then the passenger side. I want to start with a nice straight line first. Just like many things, it's, everything's somewhat of a slow process. Everybody has their way of doing things. It's been a while since I've done any 
real sheet metal work. And not that I'm that great at it, but I do enjoy it. But what I want to do is make my line and then go over a half an inch. To give myself something to overlap it and weld it to. I mean I could butt weld it but there's just really no reason to. Being a floorboard. So again I'm doing this around the pedal area first before I put my pedals in. I'll be able to remove this, I'll do my pedals and I'll already have my piece made so then I can just easily make some measurements of my pedals and then cut out what I need to cut out in order to fit my pedals. So that's the basic shape for the driver's side as of now. Uh, I could drop this down just a touch if I want to for the steering cone. I don't necessarily have to. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually just try to fill in a little close. Actually, I really don't need to, I guess. As long as it goes past the edge of the A pillar, where the, the interior panel is going to come up, and it's actually going to cover this. It'll cover this whole area right here. So, I'd say that's probably good. I'm happy with that. And it looks like I may be able to mount. So there were some holes in the firewall for the insulation, for the buttons that hold the insulation on, or pins, or whatever you want to call them. I may be able to actually mount some tabs here, some little brackets to be able to mount the uh, screw the interior panel to in the future. So the only thing I may end up having to change is this angle here. I may end up having to I end up having to open that up a little bit because otherwise there's going to be a gap. So I'm going to draw a new line, bend my ram board to fit that. So that is, I may end up having to break this bottom edge. Go about a half an inch. It's going to change. It's actually going to change where it meets the transmission tunnel as well. So what's nice about this ram board is you can really see how it holds its shape. So when you're working on fitting these panels, it's a huge help. All right, so that's better. I just did that little half an inch on the bottom and that made a big difference actually gives me a little more room at the pedals again it does affect where it ends here so I'll modify that real quick and bend this one more time I don't need the all that extra material, so I'll cut that off. I just want enough like so I can weld the pieces together when it comes time to make them one. And this tab will, this flange will allow me to do that. All right, so there's one piece. The magnets still work great with this material. It should be a pretty easy piece to recreate. I wish I had done it that way on my sedan when I built my sedan floor. I ended up doing the pedals first and had to work around them and it was kind of just a pain in the butt. So you learn as you go. That's what, that's what you do. All right, I'm going to jump over on the passenger side and see if I can whip up the passenger side real quick.
you know, not all jobs are real quick and easy, so it is nice when you can find something that, that goes smooth. Because, as everybody knows, these cars just take so much time. So I'm going to cut myself off a piece like I did before. Just kind of... I want to thank everybody for all the positive comments and everything as as the videos progress on the 34 still searching for information on the on the coop on the Blomberg coop I've been calling it the Blomberg coop because that's what it was and maybe someday it will be again I don't I don't know but time being it was a coop and it was cut down so I, I hate calling it a roadster because I don't want people to give me a hard time and say it's not a roadster so I'll just call it a coop now I can just if I got to add a piece to this I just take my masking tape and add to it so I'm going to do my half inch break at the bottom now or roughly half an inch. It's just something so I can get an idea of where it's going to sit and then bend it down. And if I'm a little off, I can just find, I'll fine tune it, like I said, with masking tape. Or cut it back if I need to cut it back. I just recently picked up for myself an Eastwood. Contour SCT, I think it is. I've always wanted to try one. I've never had the opportunity, but I've seen Matt use them and other people obviously online use them. They look incredible. And this panel was one of the reasons why I purchased it. So I'm looking forward to when the time comes to use it. I'll have it to be able to work on my floors and whatever else I need to sand down with it. So I have this flange on the front of this transmission tunnel that I'll be able to connect my next piece to. But I'm trying to get this, this piece here to break and come up so I can have I can attach my transmission tunnel to this flange. Like I said, it just makes it easier when you have something to attach it to. I'm going to have to notch this you can actually put this material in a in a metal brick and break it just like a piece of sheet metal and then this piece comes up at this mark and as long as I'm past my A pillar and I can make my tabs on these holes I'm good to go so that piece is good to go as well so next is the piece for my transmission tunnel All right. you guys with me? are you still with me? alright this is where it's going to get a little tricky it's probably going to take a few individual pieces to make this piece I may end up having to make it in two sections and weld it in the center depending on how how things go. It's hard enough making the stuff out of cardboard, let alone metal. Alright, so it's gonna get to get to fitting. Now I could make it with masking tape, but I've done that in the past as well. It may actually be easier. I don't know if it's going to be easy or not, so I'm just going to wait. <laughs> I'm going to try to make it out of this first and then see how far I get. I don't want square edges. 
so I want to make sure I take my time. It took me a few tries on my sedan the first time I ever did anything like this to get it where I wanted it to be. It was quite the process. And that also was a chopped and channeled with, but with a flathead. That's got an ADA in it and it's set back into the firewall about four inches. So there was a lot of work that needed to be done, like I said, plus it was channeled. And uh, it just made for a lot of additional work. has to be up. So I gotta trim this back. So it's gonna take the bead roller, it's going to take my English wheel, uh, it's just going to take a lot of work to get this the way it needs to be. And truth be told, I'm, I'm not the best at any of it. But I'm certainly going to do my best to do the best I can. So that's that's good there, but I think I should have gone a little further and gone into this inside corner where the bump out is on the firewall. So I'm just going to add a little bit of material with tape and then finish off that little area. it together to get what I want. I'm going to follow the contour of the, of the transmission tunnel and I'll follow the line on this front flange. Yeah, I was afraid these magnets might not be strong enough, these smaller ones. They are, but just barely. Gonna order more magnets. All right, getting there. I think we're gonna trim this bottom down some. We'll move it up. There we go. That's that piece. Then I think I'm gonna have to do one over here on this side, and then one across the middle. I think that will be the easiest way to do it. It would be nice if I could mimic this side over there, but I don't really think I can because it's different. I'm going to break a flange for the top real quick so I can kind of get it set in place where it needs to be and then work down from there. I will have a floor in this car, like a, um, a, a carpet in this car eventually. So I'm not going to be too worried about every single little seam and everything being perfect because I will have a floor and uh, a carpet in the car. So it may be, it might hide some of my sins, is what I'm saying. So I'm going to be up in this vicinity somewhere, this region, and give myself a little extra material to work with. All right, that's, this is my starting point. Pull 
time you can walk. That's my starting point. So I just made a mark so I could get my finger in that little lip. There's a little lip here where it's recessed for the next panel to overlap it. Just made a little slice in it to figure out exactly where that lip is. And make a quick sharpie mark so I have something to go back to. Arch and craft with a lot of metal work, sheet metal work in my sedan. My sedan is chopped, channeled. It's Z'd four inches in the rear. I have front and back seats with a fuel tank in the back. There was so much time involved making that work that. I had to get really creative and it just it was very involved very involved right, so I know this is going to have to bend around this corner on the back of the firewall so I'm just going to make some slices in this where I know the metal is going to have to be stretched just to try to get this to fit a little better here make a few more little slices in the top on the flange so I can get this to go around the corner of the of the bump out on the back of the on the firewall behind the motor so it's flat here can you see me not really So it's obviously flat here on the back of the firewall and it curves around on either side. So I'm just trying to get an idea of where I need to be. I'll clean this up just a little bit more. Like I said, I can always add masking tape to fill in if I cut it too far. Or if I went, you know, if I went too far with uh, trimming it back, I'm really happy with that. How that fits. It goes right down to the bottom edge of the tunnel. I've got my flange. That's here. I mean, I could make it go all the way down to the bottom edge. I suppose, but I really don't need to. Here to here, I suppose. And then I could have this piece come down. Two, three, this will be four, that'll be five. 
passenger side, driver side. So that ought to fit good. I'd like to be able to make this piece one piece over the transmission tunnel so I just have essentially three pieces. But we'll see how it goes. It may be a little too difficult to do that. So I'll kind of figure it out as I go. But like I said, so far. All right, last piece. It's not going to be a big one. It's just a touch too small. Brake on top, half inch. Also, here. All right, so that's going to have to be different than that. So this is going to have to go at an angle. So I'm probably going to have to notch that to get it to fit the way I need it to. I cut it back so I just have a half an inch to work with where it's going to connect to the firewall. That's where it'll be welded to the firewall. And th th these are just gonna get me close. This isn't a definite carved in stone. I mean, sometimes you can make stuff out of cardboard that you just, or not cardboard or whatever this is, ram board that, you know, sometimes you just have a difficult time making out of metal. So, and I get that. So it certainly isn't foolproof. I want to cut that, but I don't. I'm just going to shape it a little bit because it's going to need to be anyways. When it's metal, I want to get it set on the firewall. I have my line here where my piece of ram board is bent. Here, that's essentially where the metal is going to be bent. So I want to line this piece of cardboard up with that. So that's where I know I'm going to be, hopefully in the future, attaching them. And then just follow that line all the way down to where the tunnel meets the tow board. And that's where I need to bend it and cut it. Kind of create a little bit of a radius here because of the transmission tunnel. It's not straight. All right, so it's still a little off. Right. Minus just a little piece of tape to hold the pieces together, and this a tiny little gap. Any little gap right here that's more or less it that ought to get me that ought to get me pretty close and as I had said earlier in the video I will cut out for my pedals after I get my pedals installed but this just makes it easier to do it before the pedals are installed because it's it's a pain to create this after the pedals are in. It's just more stuff in your way. It's hard to get your pencil or pen in there. It's hard to get things cut and bent. It's just easier to do it this way. Like I said, the reason I know that is because I did it on my sedan. I also built a 30 Cabriolet 
that I put together and sold. Uh, so done a fair amount of sheet metal work, but again, I'm not a professional. I'm just a, a kid in his garage or a guy in his garage because I have a passion for this stuff. And for some reason, it, I allow it to take all my money and time. Excuse me while I clean up a little. That only took about 30 minutes, which is nice. Because doing it with metal is going to take me a hell of a lot longer than 30 minutes. All right, so that's what I just came up with real quick. Those are the pieces that I'm going to use for my templates to make my tow board. Let me grab a better light. Sorry. Sorry if you guys weren't able to see very good in there. Alright, so that's what my tow board's going to look like. It hopefully shouldn't be that bad to make out of sheet metal. It's going to be 18 gauge. And like I said, my my interior panels are going to come right down here. Uh, I may end up creating a small piece here just to fill that little gap. But I'm going to use these holes for the insulation hold downs or whatever they're called, pins or whatever. And I'm going to use these holes and build, like, make like a, just a 90 degree little L bracket with a hole in it. So I'll be able to attach my interior panels. So I'm going to keep those there. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So quick little, quick little arts and crafts project for the afternoon, for the early evening in the garage. And I'm going to... So that's the next step on the 34 is to get the floors templated and get everything done. My next one after I get the template done and the, the sheet metal done for the tow board. The template's done. Now the template's done for the tow board. I can get ready to start cutting the metal out and get the metal all set for the tow board. And my next piece is going to be underneath the seat. So it'll be just behind the transmission tunnel. It's about an 8 inch section and it's going to slope down. And I want to fill that valley where the seat is, the transmission tunnel, or the drive shaft tunnel. Um, yeah, that's it. So thanks, everybody. I appreciate you guys watching. Again, I hope you're enjoying this. I know I do get a lot of positive feedback from people on YouTube in the comments, and I really do appreciate that. So I guess we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.